Have you ever wondered how RFID tag suppliers are able to identify the best RFID inlay for your application? Well, stick around because you're going to want to find out. Welcome back to Tech Made Simple. My name is Colin Black, and today we're going to talk about RFID inlay selection. How do you know whether to use this inlay or this inlay? Well, the short answer is test it, of course. But isn't there some sort of mathematical equation or actual hard data that would show why this particular inlay is going to work better than this in inlay? And the answer is yes. Today, we're going to look at a few different ways that RFID tag providers can determine the most ideal inlay for any given application. The most popular way to understand the best inlay for any given application is to do what's called benchmark testing. The most accurate benchmark testing is achieved when you conduct the actual testing with the product or asset that's going to be tagged in the application. This can be easier said than done because sometimes you can deal with a pair of socks, which can be very easy to tag. Sometimes you could be dealing with extremely large hydraulic equipment that's one, not liftable, and two, to get your hands on it, it's extremely expensive. So your time is extremely limited if you do get a chance to test on that product. So then how are RFID tag providers able to do this kind of testing on a day-to-day -day basis? If you go online and search around on all the different RFID inlay providers' websites, you will see that they all have what's called a data sheet that you can download and look at all the testing specifications for that particular inlay. It is an industry standard that an inlay provider provides a variety of RF testing and performance analysis for that inlay on a variety of substrates. For instance, the inlay will be tested and benchmarked on, say, plastic, glass, even wood and cardboard, just to name a few. The reason for this information on the data sheets is to provide the end user with some data to point the user in the right direction when they are going to make an inlay selection. It's important to remember that this is just benchmark testing and it is not going to correlate exactly to the real world performance that you will see of that inlay in your application. The reason it's just benchmark testing is because the inlay manufacturer is testing the inlays likely in what's called an anechoic chamber, which is essentially just a large metallic chamber that's insulated with RF absorbing foam so that one, the metal blocks out any RF interference from interacting with the testing, and two, the foam absorbs the RF radiation that would otherwise bounce around this metallic chamber. This allows inlay manufacturers to get as close to perfect real-world conditions as possible, or in other words, to get the max performance data points of each particular inlay. The second most popular way to test RFID inlays is to get a handheld or fixed reader and do the testing on the actual material or product in the real world. Again, based on what I said, sometimes that's not feasible. So having to go with the benchmark data sheet testing is your best chance to kind of identify which inlay will work in the application. This type of real world testing is also good and what many end users typically do in what's called a pilot order, where they order a smaller volume of tags to test in the environment before they go live and ramp up into a full production run. So those are the two main ways that inlay manufacturers and end users typically go about choosing an RFID inlay. But is there a more detailed and calculated approach to understanding RFID inlay performance? The answer is yes. This last approach that I'm going to reference is mainly what RFID antenna designers are typically looking at when they go to design a new RFID antenna. They are looking to maximize what I call radiation efficiency. Radiation efficiency is essentially how well the RFID antenna converts the radiated power that's accepted into radiated power that's transmitted or backscattered. Another way to look at it is essentially the ratio between the total power that's accepted versus the total power that's actually transmitted back. In a perfect world, 
or what's looked at as a perfect antenna would be it accepts 100% of the radiated power received by the transmitting antenna and then it transmits back all 100% of that power. However, due to something called a tuning mismatch as well as other factors in that transaction, there is power loss that takes place. So RFID antenna designers are essentially looking at the radiation resistance of the antenna that they design compared to the whole radiation resistance of the, the antenna, the chip, the ground, all of the different components that go into a finished RFID inlay. So a few of my other videos mentioned how different inlays perform differently on different substrates. Different sub, different inlays, different substrates. Anyway, inlays perform differently on a variety of substrates. And that has to do with the way that specific RFID antenna is tuned on the material it's placed on. To add another layer of complexity to this is if you had one particular antenna and you tried to put multiple different chips onto the same antenna, you're going to get different RF performance because each of those tiny little RFID chips has a different impedance value, which again, changes the overall resistance of that finished RFID inlay. So for many of us casual players in the RFID industry, this may be going way over our heads, but it should come with a little bit of peace of mind knowing that there is a detailed calculated approach to understanding RFID performance of inlays. That's why it's extremely important as an end user to contact the right RFID experts when going to select the right RFID tag for your application. With that, I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you drop some comments below and let me know what other RFID concepts you want made simple.